Hey everyone, continuing on with our chain off series here. And this is the last core bit of functionality that I want to cover as part of the series before we dive into one of the sample projects. And that is around getting tokens and NFTs with the SDK and showing that off to verify and validate what assets your player actually has access to. That previous video, we took a look at balance. It's very, very similar functionality for the ERC-20s and NFTs, but getting access to data and understanding how to use it could be a little bit complicated. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that in this video. Like all of the other videos, if you have questions, leave those down in the comments below. And you can also get started by heading over to the Discord, which will be linked in the description. Left off exactly where we did in our native balances token video. So if you want to watch that and get yourself up to speed, feel free to go ahead and do so. You can see here, this is where we're leaving off exactly where we left off. Register, registration code, await, and then you can start calling the SDK. And here are all the gate native balance functions that we called. Now here, exact same methodology to start getting access to the ERC 20s and NFTs. So we'll call get ERC 20 tokens. And here exactly the same, we need to pass in our specific chain that we would want to have access to in terms of uh, learning what tokens are on that chain for the given authenticated user. We would wait on that and then you could go ahead and get a list of key value pairs. So it'll look something like this. So you'll have a list, so an array of key value pairs, which is a dictionary, which represents metadata and the values associated with that metadata for each of these ERC20 tokens. So why don't we actually take a look at a specific exa example of this and we'll uh, understand this a little bit better. And to do that, what I've gone ahead and done is as part of the SDK, there's this test API script that is available. So it takes your email and app ID, runs through that same start functionality in terms of actually going through and authenticating a player. And then it runs a bunch of different tests. So some of the things that we saw, get native balance, get address, get ERC-20 and get NFTs. And then I'll just go ahead and print those out. So you'll see all the ERC-20s and all the NFTs that are run. This one runs on Mumbai, but if you wanna change it to something else, you could feel free to go ahead and do so. So in this specific case, why don't we actually go ahead and set that up, which is pretty straightforward. So instead of auth, I'm just gonna create another game object here. We'll call this test, test chain off. And I have our test APIs. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy paste that in here. And since we're using this functionality here, I'm just going to copy that email and this app ID. And this is solely to save me from having to re-authenticate again. So now let me go ahead and click play. All right, as you can see here, the system says we're already logged in and then prints out all this metadata here. So starting with the wallet address, you can see that that was printed out. And here we have the balance for, from Mumbai that we saw in our get native balances video. And then each of these has an ERC 20. And as you can see here, each of these is a key value pair. So the token address of that ERC 20, the name of it. So you can see it's some Mach one rare token. It uh, has the symbol Mo rare. Uh, there's a non-existent logo, non-existent thumbnail, and then the number of decimal places for that token, the address. And then we are moving on to, actually no, token address is a different one here. So this is cask. We have cask vault tokens. We have USDT. And all of those are just different tokens that are included on my Mumbai testnet um, wallet. Then we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the NFT token. So very similarly here, you have an address, you have the ID of that NFT, who the owner is, which is in our case us, the block number that we got the NFT, and the token hash and how much of that NFT. And the reason for that is you could have NFTs that are ERC 1155s, in which case you might have more than one. 
In this case, it does tell you it's an ERC-721, so at 721s, we'll always have a token out mount of one. And this is our chain hex token that I created as a dummy on Mumbai just for, for testnet purposes. We'll actually be taking a look at this very shortly within the context of the sample project, wherein we'll, you will be able to mint a NFT and then get that authenticated within the sample project so that you can actually see the end-to-end -end system at work. Everything else is other NFTs that were owned and all of the existing metadata of it. So you can just see here, you can copy and paste any of these key value pairs when you query against the key value pairs that you get returned from the NFTs in ERC-20s. And that will tell you exactly what you need to look for. So if you're looking for a specific NFT owned by a player that say owned and specific to your game, you can go ahead and do that. So in the case of this one, for example, we might have we're looking for chain hacks. So we're looking for the fact that the token address is this, and then we see if they have any of these tokens. If the answer is yes, great. We can actually do some functionality with it based on say the token ID. And those are the types of permutations that you're gonna be able to start playing with once you validate what NFTs a player has, what tokens a player has, and you can mix and match and do whatever you want accordingly with that. So. Just like getting the native balance, it's fairly straightforward to get the ERC-20s and the NFTs. And I think that is very, very powerful. Just those two core functionalities. For the vast majority of use cases that you might wanna have within dealing with games and reading the state of the blockchain, I think this covers about 95% of those. And it's done and intended to be done in a really simple way. So we've seen all of the bits of functionality that go into authenticating a player and reading the state of the blockchain against an authenticated player. In this next series, we're gonna be going ahead and looking at the sample project that puts everything together so that you can see the login, you can get the list of NFTs, and then based on that, you can actually do whatever you want in terms of using that, say, for even random generation based on uh, what, what a player owns. So we'll start putting all of that together within the next series, but hopefully this series has been very helpful in terms of breaking down all the different pieces that are available that come with the SDK.